What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I want to do a quick review of the Halo Co-op Campaign Beta. For my review, like always, I'm going to give the good, the bad, and the ugly, and finish off with my final verdict. So let's just jump into it. Firstly, let's talk about the good. The first thing I'll mention is the fact that we finally get to play a co-op experience together, and my god, it is a fun one. I think that Halo Infinite deserve to have this at launch because of the fact that it brings back all those classic memories of playing co-op together with friends and family. Halo was built on the feature that you get to play with others around you and it's just a blast being able to do it again. The fact is this game has so many components that kind of screamed at me that it is meant for co-op and when it finally launched and there was no co-op there, I was honestly just sad to see it. Now, the fact is, when this did relaunch with co-op, I was so happy to finally get my hands on it, and I was completely right. It changed the experience for me. Being able to play this game with my friends and family obviously was such a big deal, and I enjoyed every second of it. The fact is, you get to experience all these great scenes and combat experiences with other people around you, and it honestly felt just right. The other big thing I saw that was really good was the introduction of this new distance mechanic. Now, at the very beginning, 343 had announced that there was a around 304 meters or 1,000 feet distance before your other friends would be killed away from the host. Now, at first, I was extremely nervous that this was going to limit the gameplay that you have especially in this vast open world because back in previous games, usually when you are far away from the host, they would naturally just teleport you closer to them. And I, I've been used to the way that that game was and how those games had acted when it came to co-op. But I wanted to see more variation, more distance between players because of the fact they're playing in a vast open world with a lot of different areas and, and ways to play that I really wanted to see how far away we can go. And when they said 304 meters was the kill limit, I honestly was nervous because I was like, does this mean we have to be like close to each other all the time? And when you look at the map, you're like, wow, this is not that far at all. But what you're, when you're playing the game itself, the distance between you and your friends that you can go is really far. I mean, I really think the fact that you can separate yourselves from a certain range is actually so cool. And now you can really strategize. And that's what happened with me and the Marsman crew. We basically had created strategies where, you know what, you're going to go be a sniper while me and one other player are going to jump in in the mix and cause some mayhem. We all, all of a sudden, we started doing all these different types of strategies and playthroughs, and if we failed, we tried a different one, and I really love the fact that they didn't really make you restrictive based on the distance that they said, and I understand that this was meant because of the fact that this co-op campaign is also going to be launched on the older, uh, you know, earlier generation consoles, like the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, and maybe they can't handle being able to go farther distances and i really wish in a future update that they have uh if you're playing on a pc or series s or x that you can travel unlimited distances without a problem because i think they're doing it for the limitation to kind of test this out and hopefully when the game does release the, the feature that releases that this will be changed and altered so that you can go anywhere you want to the next major thing i really liked about this co-op experience was the difficulty i think the fact that when i first played halo infinite on legendary I, I felt that this would be so easy if you had more people around with you. And I knew that at some point, Halo Infinite was going to have a co-op experience. So when I was facing off against certain bosses, I was like, you know, so this boss seemed a lot easier compared to the other ones. And all of a sudden, if I have more than one person on my squad facing off against them, I'm like, this is going to be a cakewalk. But the, what I really liked that 3 for 3 did was they actually on stream had mentioned this that they increase the difficulty of the enemies and the bosses based on the amount of players that you include in your party. So if you have one other person, then they'll be slightly in increasing difficulty. If you have two people, obviously it goes up from there. If you have all four, then it goes up even higher. And I really like that they did that because it generally makes it more challenging. And listen, me and the Marsman crew, we're all experienced Halo players. You see my live streams before, you see that how intense I can get. Um, and I felt like this was pretty difficult and i died a good amount of times you watched me on stream and i felt like this was much needed for this co-op experience to make it more of a challenge and not just a cakewalk all the way through now granted i think that if you're playing with a bunch of like really good halo players it won't be as difficult and if you know the ropes you'll be fine but you could always add in even other features to make it even more harder like for example 
The skulls are also in place already. You can you can add them in anytime you want. And when, when the game does release, you can even add in, you know, maybe a feature where you make it almost like Halo 2, where if one of you dies, then you go back to the previous checkpoint. Now, that's something you could do and add to the main part of the feature when it does release. But that's just some ideas. And honestly, it was great the way it was. But if you were to add something new like that, that would be even more fun because they could do different types of challenges and things like that. Um, and I really think it's in the right direction. Now, with the good, definitely comes the bad. And the first thing I want to talk about is no new content for the co-op. Now, granted, this is a beta. I get it. There's probably not going to be a lot of new content dropped for a beta. But from all indications right now, there is not going to be anything brand new added to this campaign at all. Whether it's going to be new weapons, new vehicles, or even new unlockables for doing certain challenges. And a lot of Halo YouTubers... Have come out and said that basically they would want to see new because they're going to add new achievements to the story and i think that's you need to do that but essentially if you don't add like new new customizations that you can earn or new things you can get from doing these achievements then i feel like you're missing an opportunity you have a chance to add some great new types of armors that are are really difficult to obtain and make it more of like a reward for doing those challenges. Like for example, in Halo 3, when you can get all the skulls, you can obtain the Hibusa helmet. And honestly, that was one of the coolest helmets in Halo history. So having something that is a challenge, like, hey, if you will get all the skulls or you do all this type of speed run or something like that, you should get specific armor types or armor pieces that make people give them an incentive to do these things. And I felt like they, did, they missed out on an opportunity to kind of show off some new content that they're going to have. Now, granted, this is the beta, so they could be adding these things, but at the moment, it seems like they are, and I feel like that was definitely a negative. Another bad thing for me would definitely be the save points. What I mean by this is that basically, if you all die, or even if you're loading into a game, your only save point you can obtain is where the last major story mission save point is. What that means is, let's just say you're doing the tower. After you beat the tower, you're actually going towards the excavation point, which is the next save point in the game. The downside is, though, is that let's just say you start capping uh, different side missions or fob bases, Instead of you being sent there as your last save point, it's instead of going to bring you to that last major campaign save point, which means that you might have to travel a distance to get back to where you were before. I felt like some of these things are just minor, but at the end of the day, like you're trying to make this as smooth as an experience as you can. Now, granted, this might just be a beta thing, and that's kind of the downside of the beta is that you don't know if this is going to be the final what it looks like in the final feature of this of this new release. But it seems like this is what they're the route they're going. And I get it. You're using this for mission replays so that you can always just go back to that last mission point and say all right this is where we're starting from we're going to keep doing everything over but i'm still in kind of confusion of you know does this mean that if you're trying to do a mission replay you have to do all those side missions again or if you're continuing can't you give me like a spot where my last fob base that i captured you just send me to that place because it's a checkpoint it's a safe point it's a safe spot at the end of the day why not put me in a place that i just captured or did that accomplishment even though you're with players, or you're with, you know, other people around you, like your, your co-op friends, like send the host, whoever the host is, should be sent to the last point or last fob base they went to and just bring your teammates along with you. Because essentially that's kind of the thing I'm, I'm seeing as a missed opportunity. Make it so that it's smoother and a lot easier for going forward when playing co-op now with the bad there is the ugly and the first thing i want to talk about with the ugly is the bugs i mean honestly this is a beta we all know they give you that warning in the beginning of the playthrough that says there's going to be a lot of bugs here this is pre-release software so expect bugs in a lot of ways and expect crashes but some of the bugs i gotta say some of them are honestly hilarious when you are playing with your friends and, and you're experiencing this stuff together but in some cases the bugs can be outrageously bad right like for example if me and the marsman crew were playing the story and all three of us had gotten killed okay normally what would happen is you get sent back to the most recent checkpoint you go from there the first day of streaming we didn't have any problems of this sort we're thinking maybe happened once the second day is it literally happened every time all three of us died we were stuck in an infinite loading screen the entire time. And I'm, honestly, it could have went for hours. But we were sitting there for several minutes just like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that could be Dude. pretty bad. It's only been like five minutes. Yeah, are they okay. going to make me quit this game forever? Nice, dude. This is the ride. Let me see Halo. <laughs> What do you mean? All right. Well, let me. So this is game breaking. Uh, let's reset this it. Is, yes. This is game. Nice.
okay is this gonna ever load and it did and it basically had crashed the game we would have to dashboard out load back in and that process got tiring because obviously you get to more difficult parts in the game where more people are going to die. You're you're basically incentivizing people to to not die. I mean, and I think that's kind of a downside. Like, listen, I get it. It's a it's a beta and everything, but like this kind of scares me. And it scares me because with the amount of bugs that there are, like the choppiness between connections between people when they're playing, as well as that bug, like I just mentioned with the infinite loading screen, I'm nervous that this co-op campaign won't release in the window in which 3 for 3 had promised. Now, granted, they did mention the fact that this should go arrive around halfway through Season 2. Halfway through Season 2 is essentially in a month, right? We're kind of right around that halfway point at this moment anyway. I think August 3rd is the official halfway mark of Season 2. So essentially, the month of August should be the time where this co-op campaign does officially release. And I'm a little nervous because I want to see, do do I think that this co-op campaign will release on time? Now, I don't know how fast it is to fix some of these types of bugs, but I'm I'm kind of weary because of the fact that how many there are, these like little bugs that could be a problem with the infinite loading screen. I, I can't tell if this is happening for more than a few people because if it's happening for everybody, this could be an issue that they need to address as soon as possible because then that means the co-op campaign won't release on time, right? And I think that's kind of the downside I noticed right away when it comes to this. I really would want to see this release on time because it's a great experience. I want more people to experience it. And that's kind of the scary thing about these bugs is I can't tell if this is going to be, you know, detrimental to the, you know, the timing in which this does release. And we all know that 3 for 3 is prioritizing co-op campaign right now and that means they're losing resources for other components of the game. And if this doesn't release on time, that means that other things that we really want to see will not release on time either. So that's why I'm nervous about it. I really wish it does release on time and I hope that everything goes golden from there. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about is the fact that everyone here, and we all realize that this is true, is that this feature should have launched with the game. Halo is meant to be a collaborative experience. But, I mean, I was brought into Halo for that reason in the first place. I started playing Halo at the age of eight. I remember the, one of the reasons why I was able to convince my dad to buy me an Xbox and buy me and my brother Halo 2 was because we promised to play the game together, right? And to not have that feature that I basically had gotten me to play Halo in the first place is kind of sad, right? It's because of the fact that obviously there's been a lot of mayhem, right, in these past few years. And whether you're going to point to COVID or whether behind the scenes things going on at 3 for 3, there's a lot of things going on, right? And obviously, promises were made by the previous head of Halo Infinite, uh, you know, Chris Lee, and he failed in those promises. Now, Joseph Staden is at the helm, and I, and I do believe in Joseph Staden. I think that Joseph Staden is a major, you know, step in the right direction because he is somebody from the old, devel uh, old devs that are looking to try to bring Halo Infinite back and bring it back to his promised land or, or bring it back to its old golden days. But this is just sad, you know what I mean? Like you have the ability to land a lot of these key features and points like Ford, co-op campaign. These are things that were essential in a lot of Halo games. And it feels like the fact that this wasn't at launch does cause some problems. I really think that this had the opportunity to really shine at launch when it was intended to come out. Because now the fact is everyone has played the story at some point, right? And usually when you, for me example, I always play co-op first and then I play single player alone to kind of, uh, you know, get a nice little review of the game as well as challenge myself in, in legendary campaign alone. I usually like to experience co-op campaign with family, with friends to really get the full like exposure to it and then have like talks about it, discuss what we, what we saw. And I feel like I didn't get to have that opportunity because this game was not complete. Right, was not fully complete at launch and it's unfortunate because i really do like the way that this co-op campaign is built i just think that they need to fix some of these problems and my final verdict of the game i feel like this is a lot of fun i really did enjoy the fact that i can play halo co-op campaign with friends with family and i enjoyed every second of it the fact is is that halo was meant to be a collaborative game with others right and i feel like the whole point of having co-op campaign is to enjoy these moments together and be able to just have fun. I had such a great time playing this story again with my Marsman crew, and I felt like every second of it was enjoyable because we were together, right? And I think that that's something that is important for a Halo series because of the fact that it's been in, the, in, in every single game 
since its first launch. Now, granted, some games didn't have split screen co-op, but that's one thing. But even Halo 5, how garbage of a story that was, had a network co-op experience. And that's kind of sad how Halo Infinite, which in my opinion is a lot better than Halo 5, does not have that feature. And it's kind of sad because I feel like it would have easily been a lot better at launch with that feature intact. I think that the fact is, is that, you know, you're going to you're going to see that with this co-op campaign, a lot of people are going to go have fun and experience it. But it's just sad because it wasn't available at launch and the bugs do scare me to think that maybe this won't be ready for next month because that's when it's supposed to be released according to the roadmap. Now, I think that the the, you know, the the fact that they do have another month time to maybe make some adjustments to the campaign, maybe if they have some of those armors that are in the stock like in the back rooms to have those included as a challenges that you can unlock. That's a possibility. I don't think it's going to happen, but I do really recommend playing this co-op campaign with people. I think that when this does release, it's going to be a lot of fun and people are going to be surprised of how much fun they have, even if they beat the story already. I mean, I beat the story twice already and I'm playing this for the third time with the Marsman crew. I'm having a blast. And the fact is, is that the story in all aspects has been pretty solid. I think the downside of Halo Infinite's story was the fact that there wasn't a lot of environments and I wish I saw more of the characters that doesn't really affect the actual co-op experience that I have with friends and family. The fact is, is that I think this is going to be a great experience for others and it's going to be a lot of fun for people who have never even played the story yet. I would highly recommend you go out and try that and I can guarantee you, you're going to have a lot of fun with a lot of other people. My only hope is that this does release on time based on what 3 for 3 has stated in their roadmap and I'm looking forward to trying it out again. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please make sure if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And please join us on social media, on Discord and Twitter, and that is located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.